or a quality thing for the Penguins. You know, they just don't. They're bottom six guys, Bob. You, I don't see a ton of scoring there right now. They're not getting production from players down their lineup to help them win games like this. Uh, it's still early in the season. Uh, we're 15 games into an 82-game season. They're going to play all 82 this year. We know about the injuries and everything that's gone on with guys in and out of the lineup. I'm not going to sound alarm bells here, but I just will – Reemphasize something that I thought after this last season ended. You know, there needed to be some significant changes or you were going to get very similar results to the last few years. And letting, letting uh, Jared McCann leave in the expansion draft trade, Tanev gone, and then you replace him with Heinen and McGinn and your goaltending is the same. Bob, I just don't know, you know, what are we really doing here? Mm -hmm. You know, I guess you just keep your fingers crossed that you sneak into the playoffs and then get hot at the exact right time. Because on paper, they're probably a middle team in the NHL, even with the great Sidney Crosby and the guys on this team that were still a part of Stanley Cup wins. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, you, you know, Kasperi Kapanen, for example, has four goals, but three in one game, only one in all the other games combined. And, you know, Zach Aston Reese hasn't scored a goal. There, there are other guys who need to step up. There's no question. Let's get to the lines, Andrew. We got a lot of people. I want to try to get as many on as we can. And we'll begin with Fred in North Huntington. Fred, go ahead. Hi, Fred. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just want to talk about Steeders a little bit. A couple comments here. You know, you have first and goal at the, at the five yard line, Bob, and you throw the ball three times. I just think that's inexcusable. You, you got to at least run that ball twice. I'm not saying Breach. you're going to three score times, that. four it, times. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not saying they're going to score in that you know situation, Bob, but I think they made it a lot more difficult than they had to. Mm -hmm. And my other comment, it's about time somebody started calling these wide receivers out. As a group, Bob, they're they're just average. That's all they are. They're average. And on most of these games, there's no separation for these wide receivers. They're not helping the quarterbacks out at all. And I think they're going to have to draft. Uh, they never replaced Antonio Brown. I know he's a once in a lifetime player. I know they tried to replace well, him. Well, I mean, they drafted Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool. But I get your point, and I appreciate, it. Andrew, your take on the wide receivers and lack of separation. I think Johnson gets open. I know he had a huge fumble, but I think for the, for the most part, I've been satisfied with his production. The other two guys, Claypool and Washington, both second-round picks, got, I got to be honest, I think Washington, for where he was drafted, is actually a bust. I mean, in terms of overall selection – he was picked at a higher point in the draft than Juju. And you just don't see it in him. You know, he wanted a trade, I guess. But, you know, really, is he anything more than a third wide receiver or fourth wide receiver? I would say not at this point. We've seen enough of him. And Claypool in year two, Bob, I just haven't seen that leap or that jump. I think he's too inconsistent. There's a big play here or there. He draws a pass interference penalty here or there. He's got one touchdown. Yeah. With his big body, he's supposed to be a red zone difference maker, and he's not. So I would agree with Fred's assessment. I think overall, we overrated the talent at wide receiver the Steelers had coming into this season. All right, got a couple of quick tweets I want to get to. Real quick, quick answers. Mark says on Twitter, Bell released today, which he was by the Ravens. Steelers want to sign him perhaps, giving some relief to Najee. Mike Tomlin always says he liked him. Would you do that? No, I would not. I don't think that you're going to take Najee Harris off the field for an over-the-hill Le'Veon Bell. I don't think that solves the usage problem. If I'm going to go out and get somebody to take Benny Snell's spot on the roster, even though he's a special teams player or Bellage, I would actually consider Frank Gore before Le'Veon Bell. That's a good point. And we have Sean Kramer on Twitter. At KD Pomp at the Pony Express, he says, what is the status of Geno moving forward? Penguins need to get healthy and playing lines one through four as constructed preseason and start banking wins. Well, the wins are not there. The points are not there. That's concerning. Even though we're in November, they're in a tough uh, division. Real quick, I think Malkin's future depends on, number one, if he comes back, he's good and healthy. At the trade deadline, it depends on where they are. I could see something happening because both he and Latang are at the end of contracts, and they can't let him go for nothing. Andrew, what do you think? You're saying if they're where they are right now, you trade those guys? I would consider all options. Why wouldn't you? I would more, I'd be more willing to trade Malkin than Latang. I still think Latang has a lot and gives them something that they really need on the backside. If I can get something really good for Malkin, 
And I think maybe that ship has sailed in terms of how much. I still would have to consider it depending on what he wants if he's you know, willing to sign another Even deal. if you know that he's not going to come back and re-sign, so you trade him and you're not going to get him back in free agency at the end of the year, you'd still make that deal, Bob? If it was a good deal, I would, yes. You? What do you think he's worth right now? I don't know that. That's, that's the $64,000 question. It comes down to how he plays when he comes back because I think that will determine that. But, I mean, how long can you keep on to you know, all these guys? At some point, you have to replenish some system. You have to go out and get some return. And I think he's the most logical candidate. Of, of he and Latang, who would you move if you had to pick one? Well, I would trade, Mal- well, I would trade Malkin just because Latang's your star defenseman. Right. And you don't have a center like Sidney Crosby. You don't have someone like that who's an analog on your blue line. But, you know, it's easier to trade Latang because he doesn't have a full no-movement clause. Malkin does. So, you know, he could worked. say to them. You could work that out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, you know, you really got to thread the needle because you've got to find a team or a city where he wants to go. Right. And with okay. Latang, he doesn't have as much say in it. But I get where you're coming from, Bob. It's just, it's hard right now for me to hear that, like, trade Evgeny Malkin and, you know, what that means. Like, Again, uh, I'm it's telling, like a turning of the page if, if you do that. If they're not in contention. End of an era. Which I think they will be, but if they're not, I, I don't. At some point, you got to make a choice here. And if you come back with the same, you just said it yourself. You come back with the same group, uh, and, and even though yep. those guys are elite, the same group, and you don't get much beyond that. Where are we here in, in terms of what you're going to do competing forward? Because there are a lot of good young teams with the, the Rangers. Watch out for them, man. They are really good, and they're up and coming. Real quick, I want to get another call before we go to break. That would be Zookeeper. Zookeeper, you're on. Yeah, hi, Zookeeper. Hi, yeah, this is Zookeeper. Hi, Bob and Andrew. Hey. Eight hey. seconds left to go in overtime. No timeouts. Even if Firemuth doesn't fumble, they can't spike the ball. Why didn't he kick the field goal? I'll hang up and listen. I would have done that. Absolutely, I would have. I think they were in his range no matter what, and I thought everything beyond that was risky. Andrew? And no one's asked Tomlin either after the game or today about that play. Not that he's going to give away you know, all of his thinking, but I'm just surprised that no one else, because I've thought the same exact thing since that decision got made on Sunday. Why didn't you have Boswell come out and make a 57-yard field goal? All right, we're due for a break. More calls on the way, more tweets on the way. You're watching the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call on Pittsburgh CW.